Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, a video about how shit never ends. <laughs> I'm here finally working on some composite propellant and wouldn't you know it, hit my cannon. My freaking curing chamber has decided to give up the ghost. I've been nursing this thing along for many years now. So this is an old Think Geek mini fridge. Uh, one of the best buys I ever did because not only does this thing get cold, so I think it goes down to like 39 degrees or something like that, but it also gets hot. You can set it up to 140 degrees. Now the past five or six times I've used it, it's been doing a little bit of the Michael J. Fox. Every time you turn it on, it starts twitching and clicking and all sorts of crazy shit. So. I guess in this video I'm going to try to figure out what the hell happened to this thing. Now I know uh, I've had to glue or epoxy the, uh, the actual fan together probably five or six times at this point, but the, the whole clicky clacky thing, so you turn it on and it would just start boom, boom, boom. Uh, it was like a relay or something was going bad, so hopefully that's the case and we can get this thing fixed because I want to start making some damn propellant and I finally... <laughs> <laughs> got my first batch of cured uh, this is R45 nice uh, rubbery so this is the actual binder of the composite propellants finally got some cured in here and sure enough the damn thing then decides to tank so we gotta get this sucker fixed alright well here's my curing chamber and uh, not sure what the hell's wrong with it but I know the answer was somewhere in the back side as with all issues so right here you can see the either intake or exhaust for the cooling fan and that's probably somewhere about where the answer will lie so we'll take that off alright so here we have the two likely culprits or one of these is the culprit we got the circuit board here where there's the DC input and AC input and the AC gets switched over into this uh, probably switching power supply here. I'm sure it's a switching power supply. And, uh, and then it just goes back on the DC side of the board. So, issues either on here or in here. Not sure which, but we can certainly test and find out. Alright, so got it out of the, uh, the back of the housing and got it plugged in right now. Now the 120 volts goes right bypasses the circuit board goes right into the switching power supply. I don't think I'm at much a risk for getting shocked and the fact that it's totally non-responsive tells me that it's probably the power supply. Something faulty there. So let me disconnect that, see what kind of voltage it outputs. We can hook this up to the switching or uh, the lab power supply, see if we can get it running off that. If that's the case, just uh, maybe order up a new one of these or try to repair what's gone wrong in here and we should be back in business alright so I got this sucker plugged in right now <laughs> just found out the hard way these two heat sinks are at, uh, at live voltage so they give a nice little tingle on the finger but uh, checking the output here on the board so the obviously the, the 120 goes in here out through these two little wires onto the board and I'm only seeing 0.315 volts coming out. So, so it's definitely something to do with this power supply here. It's not outputting the right voltage. You can see here, there's a bulge cap, which could just be old age. But I think that's just a smoothing cap on the output. Really shouldn't have an adverse effect on the output voltage. I, I should be seeing more voltage than... 0.3 volts if just the out output smoothing cap is bad So I think it's probably something to do with uh, one of the FETs there one of the uh, MOSFETs Not sure what this is. I, I can't really get in there and see the actual part numbers um, but Something on the board has gone to shit. So we'll try fixing it up with our uh, laboratory power supply seeing if we can't just bypass the whole 120 volt thing because there's actually a direct input on the board for 12 volt DC so that could make life very easy just hook right into there 
see what we get. All right, got my lab power supply going. Got this, uh, why is it reading 3.3 .3 amps? It's not right. I'm not sure why that would be. Well, let's see if we can get this thing fired up. Yeah, there we go. Those clips are awful close. Beauty. So the issue is just our power supply. And that's my my book. That is not a big deal. We can just hook up a uh, an external DC power supply, or even just slap a new one in here. Let's see what kind of current we're pulling off this thing. Yeah, about 3.7 amps. So no worries. We could uh, just get a 12 volt 5 amp power supply and feed this sucker all day. So uh, this switch here actually indicates whether whether the board's heating or cooling. So with that red, you know it's uh, in heat mode. And if I were to drop the temperature on the front face place there, we would see it go down into cooling mode. I've used this on a few of my past videos, but I don't think I've actually really shown it uh, all too much. I wish ThinkGeek still made these because actually I think... I think they're gone, aren't they? I think ThinkGeek uh, shut down some time ago. But what a great product this thing was. So uh, you can see ambient temperatures about 68, 67 in the garage. And you can see here, so it's actually, it's taking heat from the garage and pumping it into the, uh, the chamber here. But to, to just the layman, this feels cold. So we're, we're doing a heat exchange through this uh, Peltier and the big old heat sink here and of course this just helps the air circulate through the heat sink beautiful little setup I've always wanted to build a larger version of this myself but uh but frankly I've never needed anything larger than this this thing has has pretty darn good capacity and I wouldn't be able to make something nearly as nice myself alright guys well I've been running this mini fridge for about a week now curing uh, propellant and whatnot using the uh, yeah, there's still propellant in there. Using the it's a tumor, it's not a tumor, uh, computer power supply on the back. <laughs> the uh, Just running off the 12 volt rail. If you watched my last video, you probably saw it in there. So uh, today I am going to fix that because it's when I'm trying to move this thing around the shop, it's a pain in the ass with having the, uh, the brick attached to it. Uh, plus it's yeah, not a clean look. So, I got this cheapy little 12 volt, 10 amp power supply off Amazon, and uh, it says it's UL listed, which anything on Amazon I kind of take with a grain of salt anymore, because these vendors in China, they'll slap anything on there to make you make you buy it. But uh, 12 volt, 10 amp, we're, we're really not going to be pushing this thing too hard. At most, this thing draws a, a few amps. I think, uh, I think it's like 3.8 amps max draw. So... We're, uh, we're very, very well under spec there. So let's uh, disconnect the old tumor, plug in this sucker, and see how she works. Got myself a fancy new high-class stripper. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that works beautifully. Son of a bitch. That beats teeth any day. My last stripper was nicknamed Teeth, and uh, didn't want to mess with that one. Get rid of this little setup here. Freaking. Oh, did I use marine grade? Son of a gun. Now I got some other ideas for this little power supply here. I think one of them you guys will like a lot because uh, this also has a pretty high current 5 volt rail which we can use to power a chlorate cell. Check that sucker out. So this is only after a few days of running. 
three quarter inch of crystals, uh, potassium chlorate crystals there in the bottom, so that's pretty cool. And my anode here is just a mixed metal oxide titanium coated mesh, and then just a, a, a titanium cathode. So you, you don't get any contaminants in your, your final product, which is kind of cool. So we'll, uh, we'll probably do a video on that shortly. All right, I might as well get this soldered up beforehand, so I'm just going to put some heat shrink over these and try to do some nice uh, butt connections. Got some double wall heat shrinky dink. And then we'll probably put one larger sleeve over the whole thing. That's a little close. I feel like we might get some premature shrinkage. She is accepting tin. Oh, breathe those fumes in. Puts lead in your pencil. Literally. You want to go till the, the heat shrink catches fire, that's how you know it's good. So I'm actually going the route of hot glue. That way when I go to unplug this and plug it back in in two months, it'll fall off and, and make me curse and whatnot. You, you got to keep yourself on your toes. So just going to give a couple nice little squirts of the good stuff. Plug her right on there. I'll even give a squirt here. Keep our wire in place. What a beauty! Looks factory! Let's just break out the rattle can and that'll complete it. <laughs> we are back in business. There we go. Powers it right up. And, uh, and given the low current draw, I think this thing should run for many more years. Until the fan explodes again, that'll probably get me. The fan is held together with uh, baking soda and super glue, the, the ultimate fortifying agent. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe so you can get notified when I post. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.